This is Lincoln. This is Hana. This is the different way. There we go. These are bully sticks. Actually, I'm going to hold on to these so you guys have to, oh, you're not going to give that one back. I'll let you chew on the other end. And this is their roadmap to success. Primarily, we're here to work with Hana. And uh, yes, and uh, she's, she wants to take it and move away, and but this will keep them in the shot. Bully sticks are great. Uh, raw hides are not. They're soaked in formaldehyde, bleach, ammonia, a lot of other nasty chemicals. So I would recommend getting some bully sticks. Um, now, uh, I guess I can leave yours. You're probably going to stay here. Um, so what I would do is I'd make sure you get, and I, the ones I like get are from The Natural Dog Company. And I'm emphasizing The because there's another natural dog company that makes like ointment for their nose. But getting some bully sticks from them, theirs are odor free. And your nose will appreciate. You can find them cheaper elsewhere, but they will not be odor free. So what I would do is have some of these. So when you have guests come over, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about a routine or a procedure when guests come over, what to do. But um, once we're done with that, giving them a bully stick is a nice way to cap that off. And I was like, I actually like it when people come over. I do this little exercise, and this happens, that happens, and then I get a bully stick. And then and as we saw, when she took a bully stick, she left the room. So she's probably going to, we have the, the teacher or whatever comes over. Uh, we do these exercises I'm going to talk about in a sec. Then the, the person, the guest, would give the dog the bully and then the dog leaves the room, and then the dog's occupied. And chewing is something they do when they're stressed, and channeling, giving them the appropriate thing to chew on can be very helpful. So that's one of the things we talked about is the, uh, the dogs have probably about six or seven toys. Um, I would like to see that like 20 plus toys. So I'd like to have you get an assortment of a couple of antlers. Uh, antlers are expensive, but they will last a long time. Uh, I also like real bones. Um, some people put the fake marrow in it or something like that. I just get the regular ones uh, without that. Um, I also like, uh, 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 like I said, bully sticks, bully bites, uh, cow kneecaps. These are edibles, not quite marijuana edibles, but uh, those are these are things. That edibles are better for them to have when you want to redirect it and their attention. All right, you're gonna go ahead and I'll let you have that there. All right, and uh, but having some of those that are uh, that are hard uh, chew toys for them to channel their their uh, frustration on or stress out can be really helpful. The other ones I like to get are water buffalo horns. Those will probably outlast Hana. And so get one or two of them, they'll be expensive. They will stink for about a week or two. After a week or two, you won't really have the stink. Um, also, I like Nyla bones. They come in all sorts of different shapes. Don't get the ones that just look like bones. I have one that's a circle with like nubs on it. I got a letter Y, one that's like a Tyrannosaurus. They come in all sorts of different shapes and they have different flavors as well. So get an assortment of those. I would just go to Chew or Amazon. They're cheaper to get them than go to Petco or PetSmart. Uh, and don't give them all at once, give them one a day. And I would have Han uh, Ahana uh, get hers maybe in her kennel or on her dog bed. And don't like show her, just leave it on her dog bed. And she comes in, oh, great, great stuff on my dog bed. I gotta go here more often. And like I said, getting the bullies uh, or the kneecaps or those other things gives you stuff that you can give to them at the end of what we're gonna talk about here right now. So basically, uh, we have guests come over and I, the, the click for uh, look exercise is, is a powerful one. It seems really subtle, but it's really powerful and it's very beneficial. So we could do a little bit of that when you have a guest come over. If possible, it'd be nice if the guests come over. Let's say that one of the kids has somebody that's coming over that's never met the dogs. And they're just picking the kid up and then they're going somewhere else. That would be a wonderful time to do a click for look. So have them park their car or driveway or wherever, and then have them go maybe four or five houses away, and then start walking Hannah there. And when you get to a distance where, as soon as she sees them, tell her to sit. If she won't sit, remember, take a couple steps back so she can still see them, and she'll sit and take a treat. And then after that, just have your hands behind your back and do the same thing we did in the video above. Every time she looks at that person, click, and then give them a treat and say the person's name. So that's a nice thing. If they're just picking up, you can do that two or three times before they're actually coming to your house. By the time they actually come to your house, she's like, I like this character. Every time I see this character, I get good treats. So um, now a couple other things you can do to, if we do have somebody that is gonna come in, we don't have time to set that up. So what I'd like you to do is uh, get uh, one of these. This is a mini pet safe treat pouch. These are the ones that I prefer. I use a whole bunch of them. This is the best one to get. The small one is like this big. So basically, um, get one of those, give it to your guest, or have it on your mailbox, and when they get here, tell them, hey, uh, you know, sh leave a trail of treats on, and you might have to go sweep your sidewalk because there's some stuff that's falling out that looks like treats. So sweep that off and make a trail of treats, and have her come and meet them. Now, as you do this more and more often, you have a budding artist behind you, I'm watching her make art on the couch with the velour as we speak, and she's actually good at it. Uh, so basically, um, what you want to do is create that trail of treats. Now, if she's reactive, like she was for me, 
Um, that might be if it's too close to the house, but you can also set her for success by exercising her first, like I think I talked about in the other video. Uh, now, even if she is reactive, just to go for a walk around the block. And again, make sure everybody's even, but the person might have to be actually in the street walking around cars as you're walking, but as you're walking, you kind of do a triangle shape, so you're kind of getting closer and closer. Um, now, when you get to the back, if the dog, and give the person a bunch of treats. And so, uh, at first, what they can do is just do the treat toss, if, you don't, if they don't feel comfortable giving the dog a treat by hand. So, when you're walking, stop, and then, and then have the person tell her to sit. If she won't sit, then you can tell her to sit. So she sits, have them throw a treat. Now, the problem with throwing treats is most people go like this. One, two, and now the dog's looking for it and hits them on the head. So just throw it the first toss and try to make it such a good toss that she's going to go in her mouth. Now, if you guys practice this, that can help her feel more comfortable about or just be better at it. And then she's like, oh, this is a game that we can do. Um, another thing you can do for that, I, a version of it, is take the leash and tie it around a tree and have the person standing far enough away where she can't get to them. If you're nervous, the guest is nervous, this is a good one to do. So they just stand outside of her reach and then they tell her to sit. She's got to do something for them to get the treats. Now at first, you might let her just toss a couple uh, just to kind of open the Pandora's box, so to speak. But after a while, sit and then I throw you a treat. Stand and then I throw you a treat. So the dog's practicing taking an order from the person and having something good happen to them. Um, and walking is a great thing for dogs. They literally get over things by literally moving forward. I said literally twice, but you know what I'm saying. So, uh, it, so most dogs like a walk, so that's a nice way to uh, set her up for success. But if there's people in your neighborhood, that might not be a good thing going on. If we're going to have her meet and there's somebody doing weed eating or construction or there's a horn or a car alarm or something like that, it's better not to do it than have her practice reacting. So take note of your environment. Um, and again, exercising her can set her up for success. Once you come inside, I would again have somebody stay on a leash and I'd play that treat toss game with them, uh, with, with her. After a while, she's like, she gets to do it and again, whatever distance she feels comfortable with, the leash prevents them from, you know, her from getting to the person. After a while, you'll see her extend at the end of the leash trying to get close to the person because in a good way, she likes them. It's a positive interaction. Sit. Something I forgot to mention earlier. I'm single. In dating, playing hard to get works great. It works wonderful for dogs too. So if I say SIT and the dog doesn't SIT, I show the dog I got other things to do. After a while, the dog's like, I'm missing out. All he asked for was a sit. It's pretty easy. Why didn't I sit? What was I thinking? I could have been getting that pet. So um, I'd like you to use that. Uh, so tell the dogs to do something once. If they don't do it, then find something else to do. Also, jealousy works for dogs just like it works for humans. So if you say sit and he sits and she doesn't and suddenly he's getting all this attention she's not getting any, that makes you more inclined the next time to do it. And I'd like you to also pull out a treat from time to time and ask them to come. Now, he is a little bit older. We love you, old dogs. Uh, but uh, if he gives you the same, let's say she gets there first, but he's giving all he can, well, then I would give him both a treat. If I say come and he comes right away and she can come beat him and she comes way later, I'm only going to give him the treat. So after a while, she's motivated to want to come and beat him because that's the only way she's going to get a treat. And like I said, then you can actually go and it gives you the same effort that we would give him the treat as well. Um, oh, no, he has a little bit of a, he has a growth here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought it was just a dent. Yes. Nope. I got gross too. I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So um, those, are, uh, those are things you can do to help set your, uh, your guest up for success. Also, when your guest is here, if they haven't fully made friends with her, one of the things you, tips you can do, I'm trying to think where you could do it in this room, I'd be a little bit nervous with your couch because she's a strong dog. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll take the leash and we'll run around the hand, uh, run this through the handle and create a tether. So again, I don't know if you have anything in here that she's not gonna be able to pull over, but sometimes setting that up and having dog practice being in the room with someone where she can't get to them can also be beneficial. Um, it's helping her practice not being aggressive with the dog or with the, uh, with the person. And after enough practice, that becomes a new behavior. You just kind of hang out with these people. So once you've done the, uh, uh, one, oh, one other thing for that, and then we'll, we'll move on to the rest of the summary of the session. We did a focus exercise. Now, if you forget how to do that, go to dogonproblems.com, click on dog training tips, and then search for focus. I've got hundreds of videos showing how to do this. Remember, you're waiting for a dog looking and make sure your palm is facing the dog. And when you put the treat in the dog's mouth, its eye should be looking at your face. If you're uh, one of the family members is kind of 
dipping at the end and the dog was looking in this direction. The whole idea is to pro prolong looking in the face. So what I would do is once the dog comes inside, if, you're, if we kind of made friends, and on the walk, let me back up again, while you're on that walk, the person should have the treat pouch and every once in a while stop, tell the dog to sit, and you, one of you, the handler, tell them to sit, and then the person should give a treat if they feel comfortable and confident giving it to the dog. And then after a while, halfway through the walk, the person should be giving the command word. And after you've done this a couple times, she'll get used to listening to different hurt people and gets rewarded for doing so. She's gonna be more inclined to do so. All right, um, uh, and then last thing with her, if anybody wants to reach a petter, make sure you have them reach and just say, if you wanna pet her, you have to stop at 80% of your reach. And if she turns her head away, backs up or cowers or licks her lips or yawns, those are her way of saying, I would prefer you don't touch me. And the more that guest does not touch her when she does that, the more confidence she's gonna have in that guest. After a while, she won't mind them touching because they are listening to her. Okay, so um, uh, when we, uh, inside I asked, one of the first things I asked about was exercise. Hannah, uh, Hannah is a higher energy dog. She needs more exercise. You needs more exercise with all that sugar you're eating. We have one of the beautiful girls behind with another cookie. I'm gonna hopefully get one of those cookies before they're all gone. Uh, so basically, um, exercise in the dog is one of the, one of the things that we do that, that uh, really can set them up for success or lack of exercise can amplify the problems that they have. So the guardians have uh, watched my video on uh, using the stairs to exercise your dog, but even throwing a treat, getting an, uh, the go-dog-go.com is where you get the automatic uh, 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 ball to uh, tossing device. Um, scent games, Google Scent, S-C-E-N-T. Um, the laser, he, Lincoln likes the laser. And I mean, he's an older dog, but we're trying to sl slim him down a little bit and he'll live longer if he has less taxation on his joints. So spending a couple minutes, maybe when Hannah's doing the stairs, maybe somebody's doing the laser inside with him. Just be careful we don't blow out a knee or anything like that. Keep it nice swooping strokes. Uh, and don't get him too worked up. But exercise and diet are the secrets to, to just like for humans taking the weight off. Okay, so uh, coming up with the exercise, you might want to start an exercise journal. Just write a new page, a uh, day at the top of every page, write down the time and how many fetches, the time, how many up downs the stairs or whatever it is for Hana. And then at the end of the day, give a letter grade A through F. If you get anything other than an A, the next day play around with the elements. Instead of up down the stairs 25 times, maybe try it 35 times. Or if it's a low grade, instead of doing the stairs three times a day, maybe do it five times a day. I would recommend, because there's really five individuals in the house, I would recommend that each one spends five minutes on the stairs with Hana, and you want to try to separate them by a couple hours, I know. So maybe during the day, mom and dad are the ones who are doing it when the kids are at school. One of the kids does it before school, after school, before dinner. Just make sure there's no, they don't have, they have an empty stomach when they're doing these things. Uh, all right, so exercise is a big one. We also went over the importance of rules. For dogs, a lack of rules confuses them into thinking that they are our peers. If a dog sees you as a peer, then listening to you is optional. I think Hana is a little bit insecure. I think she's acting in a fearful place, and I think that she is convinced that she is in charge of her humans, at least in some capacity. There we go. That's, I reached, she said no, I wasn't interested, and then she came back around. So again, she's turning away. She's saying, no, I'd, I'd rather you don't touch me. And each time I do that, you don't have that problem. And that's okay. It's entirely appropriate. Make sure that nobody gets their nose out of joint that, that she turned away. Just say she turns away for everybody. Just So if you want to if you want to hear her to engage with you, play a little toss with her. Do the focus game with her. After a while, she's, she'll like you engaging with her, but the more that she feels like she's calling the shots, the more confident she's going to have and less insecure. Okay, so some of the rules we talked about, not like being allowed the furniture, and remember these rules should be in place for a minimum of two and a half months, absolute bare minimum, almost none of my clients should, damn, should be uh, in, uh, doing it for two and a half months. Uh, so in a lot of them, it's gonna be more than that. So basically, uh, you can use X mats for the furniture if you need to, they're about 11 to 13 bucks, I would highly recommend them, because people try to struggle to do this for like a month, and they're like, all right, how do I do it? Kind of wasted that month, so just spend the money. Uh, it's not super expensive, it just makes it easier. So anytime nobody's there, there's one on each cushion, and then if somebody comes to sit there, they grab it, uh, they fold it up and put it underneath. And they go to the bathroom, you pick it up and unfold it. After about two months, the dogs kind of get out of a habit. Remember, all furniture is the same. It's not like we'll let this couch, but not this one. To a dog, it's confusing. And every time they break the rule, you kind of reset your deal. So remember, rewarding a dog by breaking a rule, is that's the blue thing, I think. Uh, is not a, uh, a reward. As a matter of fact, it's confusing and frustrating to dogs. So, uh, yes, I call this flop. Yes, you are a good flop. Uh, all right, so other rules, uh, that, yes, that your favorite toy? I heard about that thing. 
All right. You want me to play with it? Like, no, I want you to see if you got treats. Now she's still giving me a little bit of a stare and she's moved a little bit slow. So if she's kind of moving slow, slow is a big warning sign. So if she starts moving slower and somebody tell the person to freeze, look up, and then you call her away or have them move away from her and very measured. But if they run away, that's going to probably trigger a response. I mean, you don't know. That probably also can trigger a response. Okay, so other rules, um, sit at the door. Go to the door, tell her to sit one time. If she doesn't sit within three seconds, walk away, sit down in the approximate area, and pull out your phone or do something else for one minute. After one minute, go back to the door, command her again to sit. If she doesn't sit within one minute this time, I walk away for two minutes, or within, excuse me, she has three seconds each time to sit. She doesn't sit within three seconds after the first time, I walk away for two minutes and sit down for two minutes. Next time I walk away and sit down for four minutes, and then at eight minutes, I keep double the length of time. And as soon as I go in and she sits, I fly that door open as fast as I can. She's like, what do I got in my butt? And I sit down and the door flies open. After a while, she'll go start sitting at the door as her way of saying to ask me to go out. Now, if they go both out the door and you say sit and he sits and she doesn't and he gets to go out, she doesn't. I'm paying based on performance. Eventually, you do it in both directions and eventually the dog will just go sit at the door as its way of saying, I'd like to go outside, please. I would also practice that every time you go out on a walk, sit before you open the door. Uh, sit, uh, you already do, I think, stop before every corner and make her sit. Um, something else I often do, well, also, she's not super excited for the walk, but practice leashing up at times when you're not actually going to take her for a walk to help achieve that calmness, because that's what we want them to be bored about. Um, for the door, right now, we say get out. I mean, I like where you guys are putting her, because we want the dog to be able to see the door. So if it is one of the girls and some creep that tries to get her, boom, she could be there in two seconds to help them out, but that distance makes it less uh, intense, but the dog should be able to see whatever it is. So I would rep that every once in a while. I would just go over there and have like five treats. Uh, actually, I would use the counter, uh, the uh, association. So just stand on this side of the ledge over here and somebody else is there at the door. Tell her, uh, lure her up onto the step and then give her the treat. And then uh, before you give her the treat, have the person hit the deadbolt and then give her the treat. Do that with like five treats. And each time after she gets the treat, have her come back in the living room. Then have her, you want to have a process, practice moving in this direction out of the room. And then she gets the treat. I would also do the same principle, but substituting the deadbolt with the jiggling of the handle and eventually opening the door. So all three of those things mean go over here and get a treat. At first do the deadbolt only, then do the, uh, the, the doorknob only, then open the door only, then do the deadbolt and jiggling the handle. And do that until she stays there, then deadbolt, handle, open the door. Um, I would also arrange to have, uh, do you, are you friends with any of your neighbors? Mm -hmm. Arrange to have friends and neighbors come over, knock at the door, Practice going over there, go to the door, hey Fred, thanks for helping out, I appreciate it, I'll bring you a beer tomorrow. And then they leave. A lot of times when there's an excitement at the door, the conclusion is somebody comes inside. So you still have to start practicing being over here and nobody came inside. Oh, so I don't always have to run to the door uh, in order to get it. Yes, sit. Sit. Remember to try to always pet under the chin and never reach, uh, try never to pet on top of the head so we can achieve that proud body mechanic. When I tell dogs to do things, I tell them, Twice, once during the command stage, once during the reward stage. I'll show you here. Sit, sit. So I tell the dog what to do, and if it does it, then I pet under the chin and I say the command word a second time. Try to avoid saying good sit, or good dog, or good girl, or good boy. Sit, sit. Because the, uh, the, more, the dog's gonna hear the first word you say, and it just makes it easier for them. I like the family, yes, I know. I'm not gonna practice shake with you, buddy, because I think you're confused about that one. So, um, we, let me talk about rules and we'll go, go to the, uh, the, uh, the command list. So other rules shouldn't be allowed in the kitchen when we're preparing food, shouldn't be allowed with any other dog when we're eating. I went through a feeding ritual with you guys uh, at the end of the session before we filmed this, but I have, down, uh, I have videos for that. And you guys, I, I should have petted him on the chin. He's confident, so it's not a big deal for him. Uh, sit, sit. Um, so basically, uh, when, we, when, when he was eating, she wasn't allowed to be there, and I remember to make sure somebody's guarding so that you can move him away, and maybe just use two bowls so that way he does nothing to steal of her food. And I'd like him to more come inside, make sure the other door's out so he can't go out through that and circle back around. Then when she's outside, she sees that we're not letting him sweat her, and when he's eating, we're not letting her sweat him. They can eat together, don't have any problems with it, but I just think helping them practice a little self-control would be helpful, um, and also helps them respect the humans as authority figures. 
Um, let me see. Um, when you guys are eating, like I said, shouldn't be within seven feet of it. If you're eating a snack on the couch, great art on the couch. I love it. Um, but basically, if you're, uh, uh, if you're eating on the couch, the dog should be at least seven feet away. So really here, there's kind of a black area in the middle of this area rug. So if somebody's eating on this couch, that black part should be off. They can circle like a shark, but they can't be on the black section. Um, and look for other ways to build in structure and delayed gratification, making her sit before you pick up the ball, making her drop it before you throw the ball, and so on and so forth. Okay, so those are examples of rules. Um, I'd like the family to come up with a list of the official command words. Anything that you're not sure if the dogs know it, and if you want to check to see if your dog knows the verbal. Most dogs actually only learn the gesture, and we say the gesture at the same time as the verbal. We think it's the verbal, but it's really the gesture. The way to check it, if this picture is the dog, is that I turn like this and say, sit. If I look and the dog sat down, it knows the verbal. If it doesn't, it probably doesn't. I would check it a couple times, but if it doesn't know it, I would have, we have somebody in the house who's really good at coming up with uh, funny names. I would have that person come up with a funny name. I'd say crash for lay down. I'd say charge to move forward, retreat to back up. I have funny words for eating and so on and so forth. Uh, if I want my dog to crawl, I say sneaky. And so come up with things that are gonna make people laugh. Come up with a name for your dog bed, for the kennel, um, friendly, uh, like we were doing for the exercise. But coming up with funny commanders, I think would be really beneficial. Because we use often a variant of those words, I'd like you to come up with a list of the official command words. Uh, Dad was making fun of me a little bit about this, but a lot of us use so many different versions of the word and we're unaware of it. If you speak English, come, here, come, here, come here, over here, here, girl, all mean the same thing. To dogs, those are completely unique command expressions. The more words we make them remember, the harder it is for them to pick them out of the words we say every day. So come up with a list of the official command words. If somebody is saying a different version of the word, we say vocabulary, and that should be interpreted as an A. Excuse me, I think you may have forgotten to use the other word. Can we say the other word, please? So you want to remind, remember, it's a respectful, gentle reminder. It's not, you screwed up. Um, I also say repeat or rerun if we're repeating a word, because if we repeat it too much, the dog will stop listening for it. I say, hey, Chuck, uh, if I think someone's petting without a purpose. And I say, testify, if I think it's somebody's missed an opportunity to reward the dog. So right there, if she drops it, drop. I didn't ask her to drop, that's passive training, we're talking in a minute. But the more that we reward the dog for those, act, those behaviors, the better. All right, so for passive training, uh, passive training is just waiting. Well, every time the dog comes to you, pet it and say come. Every time it sits, pet it and say sit. Uh, every time it stretches, say you know yoga or whatever the word is that you want to use for that. Uh, come up with a funny word for each dog to eat or eat food. Um, you can use the same word. Some of my clients say happy hour for drinking. Uh, you have funny words. Uh, and then name all your individual toys. All antlers can be antlers, all bones can be bones. Uh, but may call bones skeleton or antlers, you call it, you know, uh, Bambi, or, you know, I guess those are, I can't remember, anyways. Uh, but come up with these funny words that, that resonate. Uh, now, petting with a purpose is, if the dog comes up and nudges me, touch, touches me in the nose, it's telling me what to do. If I pet it, then I'm telling the dog, yes, you're the boss of me. So instead, when the dog comes up and touches you with the nose, you're gonna give the dog a counter word, tell it to sit or lie down, just those two things. Don't practice shake with him anymore. Um, so if I tell her to sit and she sits and I cut her own chin, say the word sit. If she doesn't sit, I show her that I got other things to do and she missed out on the opportunity. After a while, she'll be more motivated to want to listen and do the things that we want because that's what gets her attention. So uh, petting with a purpose is if you want to pet the dog, sit. So I was going to pick it up and throw it, but she didn't participate. So I'm not yelling. I'm not, she's not getting in trouble. She just doesn't get me. I think she's dropped that three times because she wants me to throw it for her. I'm happy to do that, but it's my game, my rules. If you can't be bothered to do it, play by my rules, I got other things to do. I'm shooting a video right now about you. So um, the playing hard to get works great for dating. It works wonderful for dogs. Also jealousy. So uh, you know, if she, if she says sit and she doesn't, you say sit, she doesn't sit, he does, pet him and lavish the attention on him. Damn. Here we go. Um, also her eyes. Um, this is a little bit out of context. If her pupils get expanded, that usually is a good indication they're over threshold. Um, also, the, uh, I'd like you to get in the habit of studying her when she's calm and relaxed. What is her ear? What are her ears doing? Where is she carrying her head? Where is her tail? What's her overall body position? Then when she's happy, and you know she's happy, study the same things. Look for differences. And then if you see that she's a little bit insecure, what is her tail doing? Oh, her tail's down. So after you learn to read her body language, most people say, my dog just exploded out of nowhere, I didn't see it coming. It's because you don't know what to look for. 
A great way to do this is to have somebody filming you while you're on a walk or gonna, about your dog's gonna experience something. Now make sure it's safe, obviously. Um, but when you do it, keep your camera sideways orientation like this video is and be about 15 to 20 feet away and try to be behind it in a bit of a diagonal. So you can see a little bit of the profile of your dog and you can also see what's in the foreground. So that way you can kind of see your dog's body language and their tail and you can start recognizing this is not a big screen TV. There's like, this is a knife. This house has a ver TV version of that. But basically watch on that big screen TV so you'll see all the little nuances. And once you know how to read her, that makes it a lot easier. You're gonna be more confident because you can get her out of that uh, trouble before she gets into it. Now, uh, make sure you go to my website uh, for that focus exercise. Um, I, and uh, practice when you're walking for no apparent reason when you're walking nobody's there say uh, focus when she looks at me turn and then give her a treat when she turns and call it turn practice turning around because if you only turn when there's another dog around when you turn oh well, where's the dog or whatever it is she's reactive to so if you just practice so we're walking this way I just say focus she looks at me I hold her the treat she turns give it to her we say turn take four steps that way repeat the process and then turn so you're basically going to do little ovals every once in a while for no apparent reason you have to do that if you expect her to respond to it when you need her to do it when there is another dog or a person that she's going to normally react to um, okay so um, also I want you to practice that uh, get back to practicing that touch exercise at first do it really close to her face the progression that I teach in puppy class is turn, lean, step, step. So I want the dog first to turn to touch the nose, then lean to touch the nose, and take one step to touch the nose, and multiple steps to touch the nose. When she's on the other side of the house, touch and have her run over and touch your hand. Again, that's something you can do on a walk as well. So she's, she starts seeing another dog, and she doesn't respond to focus, touch. Touch, touch, now we're facing this way, we're walking away. But it's getting her to do something to engage with you, and it helps her take her mind off of whatever she's reacting to. Um, let me see. Uh, make sure, I, I didn't mention this, I don't think, but when, when, whoever's feeding her should eat something first. And I would like to see the different members of the family feeding them. So that way they see everybody acting like leaders. And you're going to have to show them how to do it. And it might, the first time or two, have two people doing it. But like I said, I have four, uh, four dogs, and I can actually put them in the sit and leave the room and go to the other side of the house and just yell out the command words for them to eat and they don't try to do it, and I once had three hours, the dog waited, actually came in front of me because I forgot to feed him. I gave him some cheese and hooked him up, but it's wonderful self-control. Um, all right, is there anything else you want me to go over that we haven't talked about? No. This is a sign of a successful session right there. <laughs> all right, now there are probably things that you did forget to ask me about that you're gonna leave and you're like, oh, I didn't ask him about that. I'm always available to you. I'm gonna call you for my my primary phone after we shoot this video please program it in your, in your phone and text me I don't care how long it is down the road text me a picture of your dogs hey you worked with Lincoln and Hana and you always said Hana wrong uh, but uh, whatever it is I had a quick question about this and I will get back to you if I don't get back to you in 24 hours text me again uh, if you send me an email I get about 50 to 100 of those a week it's hard for me and I have people now that are going through my emails I want you to go to me directly so, um, but I think if you upper exercise and uh, start enforcing rules consistently, add structure through petting and reward her for desired behaviors, she's going to now know what it is that you can like or what you do like and how to make you happy. And then at the same time, we can also use that desensitization and counter conditioning to help her see that seeing people is a good thing. Remember, have those bully sticks. So every time after they get done the fetch or the, uh, or, excuse me, the touch or the toss or the uh, focus exercise, the very last thing should happen is the person should pull out a little bully stick out of their pocket. Take. I would say take when the dog takes it. And then she's going to probably scurry out of the room right here. She Maybe she'll eat it. And then she's preoccupied. And again, a nice bonus thing happened when she was uh, from the guests. All right. Well, you are a very handsome buddy, Lincoln. And this is Lincoln. This is Riley. Or Riley. Uh, I say Lincoln Riley. See, it's football season almost. This is Lincoln, this is Hannah, and I'm David, and this is their roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. Isn't that right, Lincoln? Sit. Sit.